Rose McLaren as an atomic kitten has sold over 10 million records worldwide. Now back with the band and recording a new single, their success is set to soar once again. But whilst her career is taking off, everything's gonna be all right. Everything isn't all right because I have, I would say, quite a severe fear of flying. Several times now I've got on a plane, the doors have shut, we've been taxiing towards the runway and I've actually just flipped and gone, get me off, get me off. It was like absolute sheer panic. I think I actually had a complaint from one big airline from about that. When I've absolutely had to fly, there's been alcohol involved or Valium usually. It's just the only way I can get on a plane and that doesn't work anymore. The impact on her career has been severe. I've missed out on a lot of big gigs all over the world with the band and without the band doing solo stuff. I've missed out I am on a very, very, very big TV show across the other side of the world. Liz has tried everything to conquer her fear. Lots of uh, fear of flying courses, about three or four of those. Um, hypnotherapy, counselling, all the types of alternative therapy. And this is it for me. They are, the Speakmans are definitely my last hope. So Liz joins the Speakmans at the Stapleford Flight Centre. They want to see just how extreme her phobia is. So they've asked her to board a plane while they watch. We just want to see how you react mm -hmm. and, and what specific parts of you getting towards the plane and actually getting on the plane make a difference. Okay, okay, so off you go. To help with their analysis, earlier a technician from Mind Lab attached Liz to an electrocardiogram, allowing the Speakmans to monitor her physiological as well as her emotional responses. There's the propellers and like not a jet thing, so that's worrying. As Liz begins to board the plane, her discomfort becomes apparent. I am what, nervous, nerves. I can get in because I know that I don't, I don't have to go. She's going down because she's convincing herself, well, I don't need to do it. If he starts the engine, I'm going to actually freak. As Liz sits in the plane, Nick and Eva note how erratic her heart rate has become, an indication of just how stressed she is. Wait, wait, don't close the door, don't close the door. Oh, 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 look, what a oh. peak. Oh. Peak. oh, God, she's gone over 200 oh. there. One hundred ninety-five, oh two hundred and thirteen. God. God, that's massive. That is. That I mean, she started off at ninety, up to two hundred and thirteen. I mean, that is that that is pure fear. I mean, that's. Well, what's interesting, even at a heart rate of two hundred and thirteen, she knows that actually he's not going to take off right now. Joining her at the plane, it's become clear just how serious her phobia is. How are you doing? Chest pain. How was that? I am. I feel. I just right? feel really, really, really disorientated and more like upset than scared. I just get I have this urge to like cry. I just get so like so upset by it. I don't know. It really upsets me. Last time that you're going to feel like that, Liz. I promise you. Oh, please God. Yeah. <laughs> After giving Liz a few moments to let her compose herself. It's time to get to work. And I think everyone knows the fact that flying is the safest way to travel. Yeah, you but know? I can I can argue everything. Though I always argue. I go, well, isn't that because actually there's less planes out there than cars? Liz's problem basically is not so much a flying phobia as what flying represents to her, and ultimately it's a lack of control. But part of some something does part of me just like I don't know. Do you want to relinquish that control? So what we've been doing with Liz is explaining to her, look, if it was a universal problem, everyone would fear flying. But ultimately, it's not, it's your problem. So you need to come from your world into our world and understand that it's okay. Uh, we've had a really great session with Liz. She seems very positive and she's just said, yep, let's go. And everything was looking good. But in the short interval, while waiting for our plane, we get an urgent call from the Speakmans. 
been with Liz when we're ready to go. Uh, we've just been waiting for the aeroplane to uh, be called. And uh, Liz has actually taken a phone call, really seems to have set her back and has really confirmed to us, as we expected, that this isn't just a straightforward flying phobia. I really think that we've taken a huge step back with whatever this call has meant to her. And we're actually going to have to go back in, start from scratch and fingers crossed we can do it in the time that's been allocated to us. So we're going to go back in. Okay. Thankfully, the Speakmans managed to turn the situation around and Liz gives the go-ahead. So, Scott, a pilot with over 20 years experience, conducts the safety briefing. In the unlikely event that we need to carry out a forced landing, and I suggest it's an unlikely event, it's never happened to me so far, don't tempt it, it's going to happen to me now. Even in the potentially scary bits, Liz seems relaxed and calm. Most people who have a fear of flying have the basis of fear of flying because they've had a bad experience. Liz hasn't had that. Liz's fear of flying is based on several issues, so it's potentially one of the most complicated fear of flyings we've ever dealt with. However, we're confident. But in part two, even the Speakman's confidence is shaken. I'm being fearful. What was that? Oh my God, no. As things don't go to plan. I have to get out, I have to get out. Big bang. Strap yourself in for an edge of your seat, part two. Oh, I'm so scared. In part one, we saw the extent of Liz's fear of flying. Oh no, it really upsets me. It's potentially one of the most complicated fear of flying we've ever dealt with. But even they couldn't know how big a challenge it would be. Right, well, this is your time. I shall wait here, I'll wave to you. Mm -hmm. I know you can do it. Mm -hmm. I know, I believe in you. Go for Come it. on, Liz, I'm coming with He's you. With Come you. on. Come on. Okay. Approaching the plane, Liz's mood is very different from earlier. Nah, if we tip them a few quid, it might take us to France or something. Yeah. Huh? Get a bit of, bit of blush oh, wine. Yeah. Oh, I want to get away. With the plane starting to taxi, spirits are high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as the plane approaches the runway, Liz's mood starts to change. Which bit is it that bothers you? Please. I don't want to. I, I just don't want to do it. Then, disaster. I'm being fearful. What was that? Oh my god, no. No, I have to get out. No, I just did a big bang. No, sorry. I just did a massive that, bang. Was that, that was the road, wasn't it? No, I'm so sorry, Scott. The bang, which pilot Scott assures her is nothing to worry about, nonetheless throws Liz into a panic. I have to get out. I have to get out. Big bang, big bang. Although keen to get her flying, Nick's primary concern is to calm Liz down. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Scott, she wants to go back. Oh no, oh no, no, no. They're coming back. Oh no, 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 this doesn't look good. She doesn't look at all happy. So what's that, what's going on? I don't know. Can we just keep everybody where they are? We're just like 10 minutes for Liz. Just of course, of course. On the grass. Of course. With Liz visibly shaken, Nick and Eva ask for time out from filming to focus her mind on the task in hand. Do you know what, we got in the aeroplane then and I thought, this is it, we're just gonna take off, no problem at all. However, what you've gotta consider is that if anyone's frightened of something, there's the schema that creates the fear and then there's the habitual behavior. And Liz was over the fear, totally, totally over the fear but this behaviour kicked in and she was sat there and she had this massive conflict. After more therapy, Liz is determined to have another go, but it's going to be a bumpy ride physically and emotionally. Oh, I'm so scared. To try and help, Scott says they'll take it in stages. I'll rev it up now, but I won't take off until you say take off. OK. OK? Yeah. Oh, I want to do it so much. I just... I'm, I'm getting... I 
don't have a real conflict. It's like, I want to do it, Nick, but I don't know, there's just something inside me that can't. I really want to, I really want to. No, 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 don't go. No, no, I wasn't, no, no. Uh, don't worry, oh, I'm, I'm, no. I'm just going to wait for you to say it, you know. You know, I just can't do it, and, and this conflict, and you could see it in her face. Are we running out of power because I'm keeping us high? Um, the power's okay. I'm getting crap in my legs holding on the brakes, <laughs> but, you know, the power's okay. It's like, the thing is you get in your car in the morning, and what if something happens there? To build Liz's confidence, Scott makes the suggestion of taxiing down the runway each time getting slightly faster. We're going round and round and round. After over an hour in the plane, the stress is really starting to show. What I was concerned about is the time. I didn't know how long we had that plane for, I didn't know whether someone's going to pull the plug and say, look, you can't do it today. That's what I was worried about. We got a rush to it! Then, on the next practice run, something changes. See, that's like, you like that? You like, it's exciting! Oh, yeah! <laughs> I thought you were going to take off then. Oh! Oh! Did, oh, yeah. did you enjoy that or not? Come on, be honest. Yeah, I did. You did? After six loops around the airfield, 90 minutes in the plane, and a very close thing, Liz was running out of excuses. I feel like I'm going to pass out. She said, it's this, and I said, OK, well, why is it that? And we dealt with it, and she said, come up with something else. She kept coming all these things. And I got to the point where there was nothing else she could say. Look, just tell me how. Squeeze it as hard as you want. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm sorry. I can't. I, I'm sorry. I said, throw something else at me. She said, I can't. I can't nothing else. I said, well, shall we just go uh. then? And she just went quiet for ages and then just said... Let's go. challenging phobia we've ever worked with ever ever in our lives. How are you feeling? The Speakmans are absolute megastars. Oh god, I'm so grateful to them. During the flight, Liz did have her wobbles. But in stark contrast to how she was earlier on the plane, she remained calm. This was Liz in control. To celebrate, cue the Atomic Kitten track. Oh my God! She's been set free. She had this holding her back and holding on to her for so many years, it literally grounded her. Oh my God, I'm so happy. She can just be, go, do whatever she wants to do and I'm thrilled. And pilot Scott, well he's got a new fan. Scott, I think you're, excuse my language, brilliant. <laughs> I, I'm so grateful to Scott, he's been a part of a life-changing experience for me and not to sound really are oh, cheesy, but actually, if you think about it, it is a life changing experience for me. Hallelujah, we did it! <laughs> it's okay.